And today, uh, the, the, we will discuss about the end-to-end uh, -end ASR uh, attention. So uh, the, actually, previously, we already introduced attention as a kind of a, a high-level concept, concept and a comparison with the other uh, the method. But here, we are, are, the, are, the, the, are the discussing the attention-based ASR more details in terms of the architecture and the, uh, the actual performance and so on. And the uh, first, I will explain about the attention-based ASR, which is the important component based on the encoder decoder network. And the uh, initially this uh, method was developed in the, uh, the recurrent neural network, LSTM, but now the transformer becomes very uh, the dominant uh, in, even in the speech area. So it's actually speech area also the harder experience of moving to uh, the transformer. So I will explain about it. And then I will also explain about the uh, recent advanced architecture, uh, the extended from the transformer. Uh, and the, also the several tips. Since the, uh, the attention-based ASL uh, is the uh, coding assignment for, so I will also try to put a kind of a implementation detail as much as possible so that you guys can pass the, uh, the, the coding assignment for. Uh, by the way, several people already finished the coding assignment for. <laughs> Just want to note. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this information also means that the, at least the materials are good enough to uh, implement the attention-based data. Okay. Okay, so uh, the uh, let's uh, the move to the uh, the actual explanation, and many of the first part may have an overlap with the previous lectures. So, uh, the please uh, listen to them as a kind of review uh, of the attention based ASR. So, uh, the now that the, uh, the we are moving to uh, the, to uh, the make the uh, the speech recognition to be solved by uh, using the um a single uh, neural network uh, models and so on. And the, th this is just a recap uh, that I kind of, every time uh, they're they showing the, this kind of notation that the, we are kind of thinking about uh, the outputting the token sequence given the speech uh, feature sequence. And then we always starting from the, uh, the PW given or posterior distribution and the problems is that the T and the J are very different. Uh, so uh, we have to solve this kind of problem. Okay, and the uh, PW given O, uh, again in the recap, uh, in the HMM framework, we actually uh, the, try to uh, the decompose the problem into the three components. Uh, and further, we introduced the HMM. And then this POT given ST, this part, uh, uh, has been uh, replaced with a neural network acoustic model. That was a kind of a previous uh, the two lectures uh, they, that uh, they, they, they mainly cover. And the, uh, the, this uh, the language model part, we also introduced that this part can be uh, the represented a neural network uh, language model uh, the, uh, based on the LSTM or uh, the, the transformer uh, language model and so on. In the attention-based ASL, actually, we don't need this decomposition anymore. And uh, what we only use is actually a probabilistic chain rule to factorize uh, this kind of probability. So from now on, uh, we focus on uh, this uh, PWJ given uh, the history and the observation. And this is, uh, of course, uh, just a distribution. But uh, we, fortunately, we can actually present uh, this part with a single neural network uh, compared with uh, a com combination of uh, several neural, neural networks uh, in the before. And uh, for this, uh, we actually using the uh, encoder uh, decoder uh, architecture. And that is the, the, uh, the continuation of the previous explanation in the la uh, language model. So uh, this part, uh, if we ignore this observation condition, this is actually purely language model. So we can actually represent this part as a, a, a neural network a language model, which can be LSTM or transformer or whatever. 
But in the first part of this lecture, as a kind of a following the history, I will mostly using the LSTM as an explanation. But later, again, it can be extended as a transformer. And the, this uh, the observation, how to make it, it's a kind of one uh, the difficult uh, problem. Uh, because again, this is the, the different lengths uh, as the, uh, the, the uh, token, and we cannot have an alignment uh, correspondence. So this part is uh, the, uh, generally uh, very difficult to uh, the, the obtain as a condition. And the first approach uh, that uh, the people started to try is actually com uh, the, the, the convert uh, this observation as a fixed length vector. Like for example, if we using the BLSTM or whatever, and then we can actually get the fixed vector in the last part of the uh, the uh, last part of the uh, the hidden state, uh, or we may actually using the pooling across the time and so on. Anyway, uh, by using this kind of a techniques, we could somehow get the fixed length of the vector here uh, by using the neural network. And then after we have a fixed length. A vector, given this as a condition, we just using the language model, and then we can just generating the token. So this is the uh, the very original uh, idea of try to uh, the realize this other uh, probability uh, in speech recognition. In this case, I will uh, explain several kind of our, uh, notations. So first part uh, to get the fixed. Uh, the vector, length vector, this part is kind of uh, the getting the information of the input observation and then encode this information as this fixed vector. So this other uh, neural network uh, component is called the encoder network. And after uh, that we have this kind of encoder network, we passing the information and then uh, this part is uh, the large language model or whatever to generating the token and so on. Uh, this is uh, the given the, uh, the, the encoded information to decode the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the actual uh, the information in our cases, a uh, token sequence. So this uh, the part uh, of uh, the, the dealing with the input sequence is called the encoder network. And then uh, the, the, this part of dealing with the output of the sequence is called the uh, decoder network uh, and so on. And then uh, the, this part is connected by fixed lengths. So this is the very be beginning of the, the speech uh, recognition in the, uh, the, uh, the, in the, uh, the try to kind of model uh, this actual distribution. However, uh, the, some of you uh, may know this part is very weak. Regardless of whether this uh, the speech features is very long or very short, we just mapping this information to the fixed length of the vector. If this part has a super large uh, dimension, it may actually uh, hold this kind of information. However, by just mapping all the information to the fixed strengths is actually very rough approximation. So uh, the, instead of uh, the, the just uh, the, uh, the converting entire observation, speech feature observation to the fixed strengths vector, uh, there is a kind of attention-based approaches, uh, which is actually try to uh, the convert this information depending on the token. I will ask, explain how to do that, but the, before that, uh, uh, please look at this one. If we have uh, this kind of information, that is very cool, right? Uh, because uh, the observation, speech feature observation information is actually synchronized with the, uh, the output information. So we don't care about the, the different lengths, right? If we have uh, this kind of information, so the uh, the idea of the uh, the uh, encoder decoder architecture is actually 
not just uh, converting the fixed vec uh, length vector, but uh, the using the attention mechanism to actually obtain this uh, the, 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 uh, the condition information that is uh, the synchronized uh, with the output token information. So it can be trivial, but please remember that you know this one is you know actually fixed length vector always you know uh, the, the, the the last uh, the token uh, the, uh, sorry last speech feature time which is actually just a one instance right so this is a fixed vector and then uh, the original observation O is uh, the one to t variable but uh, this one is now depending on the j, which is the same index as the token. So this is the, the goal of our uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the formulation. And then uh, let's think about what kind of a condition would be make sense. First, uh, of course, this uh, should have some information to generating the token WJ, right? We have to have our information that uh, the, this uh, WJ is uh, the, having an information of HJ, and then we can predict it easily, right? So this is the one kind of a desired property. And another desired property is that the alignment information or association, uh, that, uh, this is because this is a soft alignment. Uh, but anyway, this one is comes from the entire observation of the speech features. So if we know the kind of our, uh, the alignment information between the this uh, the HJ and the entire observation, uh, that is reasonable and also explainable. And the third Im most important part is it must be differentiable so that we can use a back propagation to train entire models. So these are the three natures uh, properties are actually satisfied in the attention mechanism, which I already kind of introduced in the self-attention, but today I will explain this uh, the attention mechanism for the kind of a different alignment problem. Okay, so let's uh, the, the first uh, the explain about the, uh, the uh, attention mechanism. Again, that is already uh, the, the, uh, the appeared in the self-attention context in the transformer encoder in acoustic models. But now this attention mechanism is used to align the uh, different input and output problems. So first, uh, the, the, there is a kind of little bit confusing no, uh, the, the notation. So, but I thought that this is easier. So I just kind of are uh, the, 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 using this notation. But anyway, please understand that uh, the H, T, if the kind of index is T, this comes from the output of the encoder, okay? And this is different from what we want to kind of get uh, the HJ here, which is depending on the J. And again, uh, why I unify this kind of uh, the notation with H is that uh, this is kind of, uh, both of them are, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, neural network, uh, the, the state vector, and easy to actually represent. So that's why I kind of use the, the same notation. But please, uh, they understand that depending on the uh, the index, uh, the subscript, uh, this is uh, the context vector or encoder vector. Okay. And this one HD is actually the uh, encoder vector, not what we want to solve this one because uh, please look at this one. This part is depending on the input time, while this one is uh, depending on the, uh, the, the token time, right? So this is uh, the, 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 we want to uh, the derive from this one to this one. But to do that, uh, first we can just kind of converting this to the, uh, some kind of our, uh, neural network values with a linear operation. This is just to make the kind of our other, for example, adjust the uh, dimension or making this kind of information to be more rich uh, based on this kind of uh, the, the transformation. Uh, this is called the value, which is also already uh, introduced in the other uh, uh, the self-attention part. And then uh, similar to the self-attention part, uh, what we want to do is just using the weighted sum. 
Okay. Just using weighted sum to connect the J and the T. How to do that? We just using the weighted sum. By using this weighted sum, we can actually convert this uh, the, the, uh, the VT, which is originally from the encoder uh, representation, to the, uh, the condition uh, of this other uh, probability, which is synchronized with the, the token J. And then uh, the, uh, the question is how to uh, the obtain uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the weighted sum. And this is actually another way to use the attention uh, mechanism, which is to convert a different lengths of the other uh, problem uh, to the uh, the, uh, the, in the, uh, the, the uh, simple uh, the equations. And in this case, this uh, attention weight is actually having the information of how the speech features are, are the assigned with the, each of the kind of state uh, the, the, uh, token uh, the information. So this is, for example, uh, the, if it possibly happens, it's that the first part of the speech features can have a more other relationship uh, with the first part of the token. And the second part of the token can be kind of related to the, the rest of the middle of the speech feature set subset. And uh, the last part can be also the represented as the, uh, the, uh, the last subset of the speech feature. So this uh, the AJT uh, attention weight is actually also the having the information of uh, the aligning the speech feature and so on. However, please note that this is uh, the probabilistic. So this is not like a kind of a, uh, the deterministic uh, the alignment. So I said that you know this first part can be aligned to this one, but this is just you know first part may have a higher priority, uh, higher probabilities than the rest of the probability. And the same for the second part, uh, this can have a higher probability in the middle part of the subsequence, but not uh, the, the, the uh, the lower pr uh, probability in the rest of the uh, subsequence uh, and so on. So all of this kind of uh, the alignment information is uh, probabilistic. Uh, this is, we called it soft alignment and already introduced uh, in the alignment part, but this is again, just a recap. So after uh, this, uh, the, 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 uh, the alignment uh, with attention weight was actually obtained uh, we can also write the, uh, the specific uh, pattern of the, uh, the input and the output uh, uh, the relationship. And uh, it is a little bit too small, but it is actually J, this part, output part, we actually uh, the, have a sentence here. And then this T is corresponding to the observation here. And as you see that, that, that this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the attention uh, weight is having a high uh, prob uh, probability in the kind of a diagonal component. Uh, please note that this kind of a, uh, the dark blue part is uh, probability is almost zero. And the uh, light color means that the probability is uh, the, the, uh, the positive and can be uh, very close to one. So if we actually plotting this attention weight, uh, uh, we can actually uh, the, uh, the, the get the, uh, the alignment probability uh, in the soft sense. And this is, by the way, very good debugging method. So uh, the, if you guys uh, want to uh, the, uh, check to see your uh, attention mechanism in the encoder decoder in speech recognition is working or not, I highly recommend you to actually check this uh, the attention weight and visualize them. Cool. Um, the this is the kind of uh, the uh, the the uh, typical attention pattern, and the as I mentioned, uh, mathematically there is no constraint for the alignment, but just you know uh, the speech equation, it is actually desired property is the, the monotonic, so that it actually turns out that this is uh, the monotonic alignment. But again, I want to mention that there is no mathematical constraint 
to make this attention to be a uh, diagonal. So this is actually one of the difficult part uh, of the, uh, the using the attention-based ASL. It is uh, the too flexible. And then sometimes actually, uh, the in, especially in the beginning, uh, so in the beginning of the training, uh, the, the attention is difficult to uh, the train, and then the non-monotonic uh, the attention pattern often happens. But later, if the attention uh, pattern is well trained, then uh, the speech recognition cases, mostly it becomes monotonic. So uh, the please uh, the, the, uh, remember uh, this part uh, uh, the, so that the, the you guys can actually debug uh, what's happening if we actually implement the, the attention-based encoder decoder in the coding assignment for. By the way, as I mentioned many times, uh, mon monotonic property is only for the speech recognition or speech synthesis. We don't need a monotonic uh, the, uh, the, 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 the property uh, in the other application, like a machine translation is another big application of the encoder decoder method. And this is the reordering that happens. So we don't need actually uh, the monotonic uh, the, uh, the assignment. Uh, and even for the speech uh, the processing applications, for example, uh, the speech translation, we also don't need a monotonic alignment. Uh, what else? Uh, the, the, we, our group is recently actually working quite actively in the speech summarization, which is given the long speech uh, the recording to uh, the get a kind of summary of what people are kind of speaking in a few sentences or something like that. Uh, this problem is called speech summarization. And of course, we don't need a monotonic alignment. Uh, or monotonic alignment is too uh, the, the strong constraint uh, for uh, the uh, speech summarization and so on. And again, the uh, this is actually one example of the wrong alignment. Uh, this uh, the quite often uh, happens. And the, uh, the, uh, you guys may, if you guys implement coding assignment for and uh, having this kind of uh, the wrong pattern, uh, the, the, this is the, the probably due to some of the issues in your training, but it's actually uh, the solved by uh, the using the correct uh, the, the beam search part. So uh, the, uh, this is just a note, but this is very typical uh, the wrong uh, alignment. It's actually uh, the, um, I, I, I cannot read, by the way, uh, this sentence uh, because I, I cannot read the Mandarin, but uh, I could observe that this phrase is the, repeated three times, right? And this uh, the attention pattern is also three pattern, uh, uh, the, the same kind of uh, the, the word is repeated three times. Uh, this is actually quite often happens in the uh, the uh, the uh, the when we are uh, the training the uh, the attention based encoder decoder wrongly, and uh, it is a kind of little bit obvious. But the, let's move to the short quiz question. Okay, so uh, the now that I want to kind of explain about the attention weight, uh, which is uh, the uh, quite uh, the, the uh, often uh, discussed in the similarity or even using the same terminology uh, with the information retrieval. Uh, from now on, the, I will try to kind of mapping the query key value pitch that we already introduced in our explanation, but more kind of our uh, the, the information retrieval context and uh, how this kind of other uh, uh, attention weight of the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, derivation based on the key value, key query value uh, is reasonable. So uh, the first, uh, the, the, yeah, any of the information retrieval system is fine, but uh, this is just one uh, the, uh, the example of the uh, information retrieval system based on the search, right? Uh, first, we uh, the follow the query here, in this case, is Carnegie Mellon University. And then we actually get a lot of the, the, the other possible uh, the, the, the candidates, right? 
and these are the, the are corresponding to the key. And then actually uh, the, these are sorted based on the similarity. And uh, in this case is top 10 uh, the image that is close to the, uh, the, the Carnegie Mellon University is actually appeared, right? A uh, very kind of a familiar uh, concept. And this actually concept is used in the attention uh, the, the calibration as well. So first, uh, the, the, uh, the moving uh, the to uh, the, uh, this kind of uh, the query and the, uh, the, uh, the uh, query and the key uh, that and introducing the score. So we have a query, in this case, is Carnegie Mellon University, and the key is the kind of million or billions of the images. And the, uh, the how to kind of get to the kind of uh, the, the more uh, similar word, uh, the images, we actually using the score function, some scala score function. And then uh, the each of the kind of uh, image, we just get some kind of score, sorting it, and then getting the most similar one, okay? I think this part is not so much difficult, right? Okay, let's move this one to the our uh, the speech uh, problem. So uh, the query is actually uh, represented by the information of the word token. And in our cases, we actually using the hidden state vector uh, in the kind of a, a token. By the way, unfortunately, we cannot use the, uh, the, the token in the current one. This is because we want to actually predict this one, right? We don't know this answer yet. So the, if we know this kind of answer, this one, uh, the, the, we don't have to actually uh, the, the, the solve this problem. But our prediction problem is to predict this kind of uh, the, uh, the, the token. And to do that, what the information we feed we feeding the kind of uh, the hidden state vector in the, uh, the neural network language model until one to t minus one, just before this one. And the hope that this information has a kind of a, uh, the, some information to predict this one, feasible, right? And then using this one as a query instead of the uh, token, again, because we don't, we uh, the, the cannot, uh, that I have this information yet. And then since this one is just a kind of a hidden state vector designed for the neural network, we just change it to the linear uh, transformation to uh, some kind of uh, the vector. Uh, this is more like an adjustment uh, of the dimensions or kind of space. And then we have a query information now, this one. So just, you know, WJ is represented by this one. And then key information, in our cases, actually, this becomes a speech feature for each time frame. And then again, uh, the, the, we actually are uh, changing this uh, by using the linear transformation uh, to adjust the dimensions and also changing the, uh, the, the, uh, the space. But basically, uh, the, this one is a kind of an information of the each other uh, speech uh, the feature. Okay. And then the, the, let's move back to that. This one, for each speech feature, or in the, this example image, but anyway, in the speech features, we just want to have a score, right? And then we can actually use whatever. In this case, it's, let's use in the uh, inner product. If these kind of features, uh, both of them are same dimension, and then we can get just some scalar value, right? And making this has a similarity. This is actually uh, the, what uh, the we are actually using for the uh, information retrieval. So it's same, but just kind of changing the representation of the query uh, the, from the, uh, the, uh, the uh, hidden state vector in the uh, language model part, decoder part. And then a key part it comes from the speech feature. And then this itself may be already good information, but uh, to kind of uh, use other uh, making it at a, at a more probabilistic view, let's take the softmax. 
and then let's uh, making it as a weight. So this becomes uh, the attention weight, which uh, now becomes a kind of uh, the, pro uh, the similarity becomes a probability. Uh, but anyway, by using this one, like we hit the sum of the uh, the, uh, the, the uh, token and the corresponding uh, image, we can actually uh, the, uh, the, uh, the through the query comes from the, uh, the, the uh, hidden state uh, that has the information of the WJ. And then we can get the corresponding, we can uh, actually hit the corresponding uh, speech features uh, based on the attention. But uh, this is not you know, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the designed to be like this. Uh, by doing this kind of uh, the, the, the function form, and then uh, the finally making this train to kind of uh, the making the, uh, this one to uh, the minimize the loss, speech equation loss and so on. And we hope that this one is working like this. Uh, this is a kind of attention mechanism. Again, there is no explicit uh, the, the embedded relationship uh, between the speech feature and the query. This is all kind of a soft relationship compared with the CTC and so on. So that's why that kind of a weird attention pattern unfortunately happens when uh, the, the training is especially not very kind of uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, doing well. So this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the mostly wise, widely uh, used uh, the, the uh, attention to kind of connect the speech, uh, the information, and the other uh, output uh, token information. But uh, I just want to recap that we already introduced the attention, right, in the, the self-attention. And the features uh, the, the also that we can now uh, debut this uh, the, uh, the self-attention as a kind of uh, information to get the kind of uh, from the next layer to get the information a uh, relationship of the previous uh, the, the context of the speech features and so on. So it's basically similar, but the, uh, the self-attention, the cross-attention uh, has some difference. Of course, this is uh, the cross-attention to connect the, uh, the input and the output token, while, uh, while the, the self-attention is connecting the uh, the each layer of the speech features. So query is different. Uh, query is not from the, the output token. Uh, in the self-attention cases, query comes from the, uh, the original, uh, the, the, our own kind of speech feature or uh, the, the, uh, the uh, text uh, the feature and so on. And then uh, the, the making the attention uh, mechanism and so on. So uh, the, other than that, the older kind of computation is same. Actually, this is one of the beauty of the implementation. Self-attention and the cross-attention is basically uh, the using the same function form, but just changing, for example, the uh, query part uh, from the, uh, the, the, uh, the self-attention uh, itself to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the query uh, obtained from the, uh, the target token uh, the sequence. And then without changing the other uh, function form, we can actually realize this both kind of uh, the unique uh, the, the operation uh, at the same time. And uh, I mentioned that the, uh, the, the here, uh, we actually using the inner product to get the scalar. But actually there are a lot of ways to get the scalar. This is just a one variant. And originally this part was well actually uh, the, the studied and uh, one of them is actually using the neural network to uh, combat uh, this uh, the, the, uh, the two uh, the hidden uh, the, the state with a nonlinear uh, the function and then learnable parameter to get the scalar uh, the value and so on. There are a lot of actually variant uh, to uh, the make the scalar part uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, to make the kind of uh, the, the obtain the scalar part. Uh, but uh, anyway, the key idea is just getting the scalar, and the inner product is actually quite sufficient. Okay, so this is the kind of all component of the attention-based encoder decoder that I uh, explained. Okay, not five, right? And uh, still <laughs> four, right? <laughs> okay, a bit surprised. Um, oh. The, the encoder part, 
is uh, the speech feature, uh, the processing the speech feature. So we could actually using the any of the operation and actually we could use the any of the operation I introduced in the acoustic modeling part. I introduced the feed forward neural network, uh, convolutional neural network, uh, the uh, uh, recurrent neural network, and the other uh, self attention. Actually, we can use this part uh, with any of them. And the attention I mentioned, uh, this is a connection of the decoder part. And the decoder part is uh, basically uh, the neural network language model with the value we came from the attention. So, and then this decoder part, uh, as I uh, also that covered in the last uh, the, the lecture, which people usually using the LSTM or uh, the transformer, uh, the uh, deco uh, decoder and so on. And until 2019, actually the speech uh, the recognition, uh, the attention-based ASR uh, is uh, the, the, the actively studied uh, based on the uh, recurrent neural network. But uh, uh, in the, uh, the, 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 the two, around 2019, actually people uh, the started to uh, move to the, uh, the transformer. And the pitch is a little bit kind of uh, later than uh, the already NLP people are working on the transformer. But anyway, two years later, uh, the speech people also started to use the transformer. And now I move to the explanation about transformer. Uh, any questions uh, so far? Okay, after that, the mostly neural network uh, engineering. So I just kind of explain about, you know, the combine this one, combine this one. So it's uh, not so much difficult concept. Um, the, uh, since 2019, uh, the, the speech, uh, the people actually started to use the, uh, the transformer and the, uh, the, they, they, that's uh, the, the both the, the, the encoder uh, and the decoder. And uh, I will explain a bit more about the details about the transformer. Uh, by the way, the, uh, this is actually one of the, uh, the, uh, the, the contribution in the ESPNet project. This, uh, the second paper is showing that the uh, entire 15, uh, the, the ASR base, baseline benchmarks and the transformer is better than the, the, the LSTM. After this paper was published, uh, many kind of uh, researchers actually moving uh, from the uh, the uh, recurrent neural network uh, to uh, the, the transformer. So I still remember uh, these kind of activities. And this paper is actually one of the most cited paper in ASRU in uh, these kind of five years. Okay, so again, this part is more for the uh, just kind of our introducing the several layers. So I will mostly skip or other uh, ask you guys to check some details about the other other neural network uh, the uh, papers uh, and so on. But the first part is positional embedding. Actually, the uh, the transformer uh, the operation is basically uh, the order agnostic it actually cannot fully really kind of understand the, the order information. And sometimes the order can be happened uh, inside the neural network. So to prevent the, uh, the reordering, uh, positional embedding is actually used to avoid uh, the mitigate the issue uh, of the order agnostic operation in the, uh, the, uh, the transformer. This is actually one uh, component eh? important in the transformer. And the second part is the, uh, the, the one that we already discussed, multi-head extension. Uh, this is uh, the self-attention since it is uh, the inside the encoder. But anyway, uh, the, the instead of using just a single attention, uh, we usually using the multiple attentions. Four or eight or depending on the kind of our other model size, architecture and so on. And after we have uh, this kind of a parallel uh, the, the attention, uh, we actually just concatenate it and then making a big uh, the vector and then passing it to the later stage. And this concatenation and the parallel uh, the, the, uh, the computing the attention 
it's again it can be well parallelized uh, so that it is uh, the, the, the having uh, information of modeling various speech dynamics but also satisfying the parallelization uh, the information and uh, this is actually example of the uh, the merge head attention and uh, this is again self attention so it's not cross attention it's not like you know input output it's just a self attention but uh, uh, this is actually one answer for the other, uh, your question. So this one is diagonal. It's self-attention mostly should be diagonal to uh, the, get the information because, you know, the most relevant information comes from the, 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 their own, right? <laughs> but uh, actually, interestingly, there are several other different patterns in general. Uh, this means that, that uh, like for example, this one is actually try to capture the neighboring information. Very interesting. And this one is a little bit difficult to interpret. Uh, one part, probably this actually capture the global information, but the other part, maybe it's just a noise. Uh, the, the, for example, even removing some of them, it's still working well. So there is actually one of the uh, the important compression technique in speech recognition is try to removing this kind of a non-diagonal element. Actually, it doesn't the degrade the performance so much. So this means that the uh, the diagonal pattern is the most important. But sometimes some people also again are uh, explain that this can capture the global information. In our case, like a speaker or a noise or something like that. Uh, but I don't have so much kind of clear evidence about it, especially for everything. I'm very sure that some of them are just noise. Okay, after we extend the uh, the march, uh, the, the, the head attention, and then after that, we actually also have an additional feed for the neural network. And then uh, the getting the kind of output and so on. And the layer norm is sometimes uh, the, 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 the in between the, the operation, which is actually normalizing the feature that makes a kind of a, a, the convergence a, the quite a, the reasonable. And the another important uh, uh, operation, which was uh, the originally uh, well kind of developed in the, the image computer vision is that residual connection. Uh, that means that it's actually copying the input feature and uh, uh, the neural network is only adjusting the residual component. That is actually, again, you know, only residual component. So uh, that, that you could imagine that which can be easier than uh, the predicting everything, right? And actually this easier me, uh, that has a two meaning. It's actually, yes, the easy to uh, the, the estimate the parameters. And also by uh, doing this kind of a connection, uh, back propagation can have a short shortcut here, so that the optimization also becomes very stable uh, based on this residual connection, and this residual connection is also used in the transformer encoder. And then now I explained about the, uh, the the I just explained about the uh, the encoder, and now I move to decoder, but actually decoder doesn't have so much changes. One part of the change is that front end part. When I explained about the, uh, the acoustic modeling, I already mentioned that always we have a, a, a convolutional neural network based uh, down sampling in the input speech features. But uh, of course, we don't need this kind of operation in the uh, decoder, which is uh, the, the more like a uh, language model part, right? Instead, we just having a token embedding, each kind of converting the other uh, word to the other uh, linear space that we discussed in the, uh, uh, the neural network language model and so on. And then uh, it also has a, uh, the, the, since this is a neural network language model, so this is uh, the, the causal uh, the, the, uh, decoder, uh, the causal self attention uh, instead of the, uh, the normal self attention and so on. But in addition to this component, uh, uh, the most important part is that the, uh, the, uh, the attention, uh, the computation 
uh, for the other uh, input part. This actually usually inserted here. And then uh, the, the, by doing that, we actually condition this uh, the, the, uh, the decoder uh, based neural network language model uh, with the input uh, the information via attention mechanism. So basically, uh, the, the, uh, this is a kind of uh, the difference. But except for that, the encoder and the decoder is actually very similar architecture. Uh, that is also a very kind of a cool part of the transformer. Basically, we don't have to change so much about the function form. We're just changing some kinds of our other input, or we're just kind of inserting the cross attention, and then we can actually make our, our transformer encoder decoder. And again, uh, the, this kind of our high level design part is uh, one of the hallmark in the coding assignment for. And since this is the, uh, the coding assignment, so I will also present several kind of our, uh, the tips uh, when you kind of uh, implementing it. Yes. Okay. Um, so the uh, now I move to the uh, tips. And the uh, first uh, the part uh, of the, the important uh, the, the information in the transformer is that the uh, generally, uh, the learning rate is a little bit tricky. So learning rate is actually uh, the, the behaving like this. This is intentionally, we make uh, this kind of function for the learning rate. This means that the first few epochs, by the way, this, where we kind of making a peak is uh, the one of the hyperparameter. Uh, this uh, the region called warm up. So we starting from the small learning rate, and gradually increasing it so that it's kind of a, a the neural network as kind of a, it is trained, it's a, it may find a kind of a better solutions in the beginning. And then we actually making this kind of a, a learning at a later behavior. But later, if the learning rate is too large, it actually cannot find a better solution. Uh, to do that, uh, we actually uh, try to gradually uh, decreasing the learning rate. So this uh, the learning rate uh, the scheduling is quite common uh, in the, uh, the, the, the transformer-based uh, approaches. It can be applied to many of them, but the, the, the after the transformer, uh, this uh, the, the, the optimization uh, techniques becomes very popular. And then there are two parameters. One is when we kind of set a peak, and the other is the absolute value. So these are the two hyperparameter is actually tuning. And the, this uh, learning rate tuning is necessary, unfortunately necessary. Uh, there is no other the, uh, the, the best parameter that will be working on everything. So please uh, always first tuning the, uh, the learning rate and then uh, the find the, uh, the some kind of optimum uh, the solutions. So it's quite often happened that the transformer doesn't actually converge at all or train at all or overtraining or undertraining. And just uh, the tuning the learning rate can generally solve this issue. Again, uh, learning rate tuning is uh, necessary. Very few cases I didn't tune, but most cases I actually tune the learning rate. Otherwise, it doesn't actually showing the uh, full benefit uh, of uh, the architecture. And another important part is the averaging. Actually, uh, the, instead of using the single model optimized in the, uh, the neural network, we generally are uh, averaging the other uh, models in a uh, 10 epochs or something like that. The even, even uh, the, the, is uh, the model averaging uh, the prepared in the coding assignment for? No, okay. So this part can be actually one point that may improve the performance. Uh, it's the, my experience always relatively 10% uh, the, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the improvement that we can get uh, if we kind of modeling the uh, parameters and so on. This comes from the fact that the neural network is again kind of our, uh, every kind of our, uh, the, the, uh, the training, it's actually slightly fluctuating. And in some cases, it can be actually overly trained. But if we kind of averaging across the kind of previous uh, the, the models, 
And then this kind of fluctuation issue is uh, the, the, the mitigated. So model averaging is also quite important uh, technique. And the other important part is batch size. Batch size is very important. Uh, well, I already discussed in the batch size, uh, but the larger batch size is actually important for the transformer. However, uh, batch size is a limitation. If we don't have uh, enough GPU memory, we cannot actually increase the GPU size, uh, the, the, sorry, batch size anymore, right? And then there is a technique called uh, the gradient accumulation, which is actually uh, the virtually increasing the batch size. This, by the way, doesn't kind of uh, uh, improve the training speed, but just virtually increase the batch size. So for example, instead of uh, the taking the, uh, the gradient and then updating the parameter, we take, for example, two, uh, the, the, uh, the first we kind of performing the gradient and then saving the mini batch. Doesn't update the parameter. Okay, doesn't update the parameter. Moving to the next uh, mini batch, getting the, uh, the, the gradient. And the gradient has the additiveness. So we can actually adding them, accumulating it. This corresponding to actually the other uh, uh, the, the working on the two uh, mini batch sites at one kind of gradient, uh, the, uh, one kind of uh, the parameter optimization, right? So this actually virtually increasing the batch size. So this doesn't kind of are again uh, the the the, the, uh, the change the kind of training speed and so on. It can be actually slower because up number of updates becomes smaller. However, transform actually want to have a large batch size to make it uh, the, the uh, stably working. So in these cases, uh, this uh, gradient accumulation is very important. Uh, I I know that there there is a very interesting uh, discussions. Actually, the after Google uh, the the pre uh, the proposed the transformer, the other open source uh, the, the, the the project tries to follow transformer, but they couldn't actually uh, the reproduce the, the Google's result, and they actually contacted the Google people. What's the difference? And found that the batch size is the most uh, the important part. However, Google has a TPU, and we don't have a, uh, the, 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 we couldn't use TPU at that time. And we couldn't actually make the, uh, the same size, uh, the same mini batch size as Google did. And then people actually using this, uh, the, the gradient accumulation techniques. And the, the transformer was finally reproduced uh, the, the, other than Google team. So anyway, this uh, gradient accumulation is very important. And many of the modern toolkits actually having this implementation. <laughs> and the last part is check the length. This is also very typically happens. So as I as you remember, transformer has a basically uh, the, the square. The length of the uh, the square of the length is uh, the, the the computational cost. So it can be input, it can be input and output. This is actually cross attention part. And it can be uh, the, the, the output uh, part. And we actually require a lot of GPU memories. And the very typical questions, which you know, we want to avoid to you know, answer the typical questions in the theater. So I want to mention many people just you know, reporting that uh, my uh, the data having uh, uh, the GPU memory issues. And the, there might be an issue comes from the, you know, your network might be very large, but most of the cases, it actually comes from here. And the most of the cases, you guys including a very long sequence, it can be input or output. But in this cases, of course, this other memory becomes kind of a, a too large and the training is stopped, right? And then easy solution is just removing this kind of long sentences. This is very kind of a powerful technique. So please remember that. Uh, the, without that, the, the, you guys actually may have some kind of issues uh, to uh, the train the transformer uh, and so on. Okay, so that's the, uh, the, uh, the, the tips and I hope you guys can actually make the uh, coding assignment for works. 
at least coding assignment for, again, you don't need a, a multiple GPUs. And then now I kind of uh, uh, explain about the impact uh, of the transformer. This is actually the result that, that, that uh, I extracted from our papers, which actually uh, 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 gave the, uh, the big impact of how transformer is important in speech. So before that, actually there were big discussion whether transformer is really kind of important for speech or not. But after our papers, we actually showing that uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, fifteen 15 tasks. And uh, let's compare it with the RNN versus transformer. And they almost all the kind of our tasks, uh, the, the, the transformer is actually better than a uh, recurrent neural network. So with this result, actually, again, uh, the many people started to use the transformer in speech recognition. Now it becomes very kind of popular standard. So actually many people started to forget this kind of work. <laughs> Since you know the people that knew that the, now the transformer is very kind of a powerful. But before that, actually around 2000, everyone was actually the, 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 uh, the excited about our result of this kind of a very good performance in the transformer. And this is actually uh, one of the, uh, the, the work that we have done. Uh, the, at that time, the, the all kind of methods are based on the RNN. And then uh, the Google people actually having a very good performance by using the technique called the spec augmenter, but spec augment and the recurrent neural network. And this is, as you see, you know, big jump from the, uh, the previous kind of best result, right? And everyone thought that you know, it is very difficult to compete with uh, the Google. Uh, but actually, uh, the, by using the, the ESPNet uh, the transformer, we can actually uh, reaching uh, their performance. Uh, by the way, we also using a spec augment. So we use a spec augment and the transformer, and then uh, the finally getting the kind of a result that the Google guys are doing with the, the, uh, the, the RN-based approach. So it's not a very fair comparison. But anyway, uh, the, with their kind of a big resources and a lot of tryouts, uh, that the, they actually get a, in, uh, the quite impressive result, uh, but we can actually uh, the, the, the get the kind of a good result uh, by using the, uh, the good uh, the method, good tools, good weapon, uh, in this case is transformer. And I kind of are uh, the, using this kind of figure. Uh, the, is this, I often use this one, by the way. Uh, the, uh, the, which one is Google? <laughs> <laughs> this part, right? Uh, the Google, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft. The, uh, the, the, this giant are uh, actually quite good. But uh, by using the ESPNet and by using the transformer, uh, that we can somehow uh, compete with them. However, uh, they actually, you know, still very good. They actually uh, the, proposed a new method uh, uh, the named Conforma. This is actually the variant of the attention, uh, the, te the transformer-based approaches uh, augmented by the convolution uh, neural, neural network. So which I will explain uh, in Wednesday. Okay, uh, that, that's it, thank you.